Hi guys, um, so now we're going to look at problems that might not have a, where a equals 1. So we're going to look at um, some of those problems. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can uh, maybe see them a little, just a little bit better. Um, so the first thing I'm going to look at is my coefficients. So um, my coefficient here is 5, 40, and 35. Well, they're all divisible by 5. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to factor out a 5. So if I take a 5 out, that's what, what, what is my greatest common factor? It's 5. So I'm just going to take a 5 out. So that leaves me with x squared plus 8x plus 7. Now, if you look in here, let's get a different color. In here, I just have a trinomial, which I just got done factoring. So I should be able to just factor that using the techniques we just learned. So I'm just going to make my... Um, graphic organizer, I need two numbers that multiply to be 7 and add to be 8. Well, there's only two numbers that multiply to be 7, um, which is 7 and 1. Okay, so um, the 5 cannot disappear. It still needs to be part of my final answer. So I have 5 times x plus 7 times x plus 1. Now I just want to clar clarify what I just said. Remember, um, that when I multiply this all back out, it has to equal this. That's why the 5 cannot disappear. It needs to be part of my answer. So when I multiply the x plus 7 and x plus 1 back out, I should get x squared plus 8x plus 7. And then I multiply the 5 back through, and then I will get my original equation. So remember, I cannot make anything disappear into the math black hole. Um, does not work that way. So um, here we go for the next... Um, Next problem, um, and we're going to move on right now. So sorry. Um, here we go. So what goes into 3, 15, and 18? Okay, well, 3 does, yeah. So if I take a 3 out, I get x squared plus 5x plus 6, okay? And then I have a trinomial in here, um, right here. So I'm going to just factor this like I've been doing, okay? So that gives me my graphic organizer times, six, multiply to be 6, add to be 5. Um, so I've got 3, I'm going to leave that out there. X, oh, we haven't factored yet, that was really good. Right, so I'm just going to fill that out, and then we'll fill in our blanks. Well, what multiplies to be 6 and adds to be 5? 2 and 3. Good. Plus 2, plus 3. Okay, good job. Got two more to go on this one, and then we'll move to the next section. Okay. So I have 10, 40, and 40. Well, what, multiply, what goes into 10, 40, and 40? Well, 10 does. If I factor out a 10, I get x squared minus 4x plus 4. And then my graph organizer says what multiplies to be 4, multiplies to be 4, and adds to be negative 4. Well, I know what multiplies to be 4 is 2 and 2, but it needs to be add, add to be negative 4, so they are both negative. So I've got 10 times x minus 2 times x minus 2. And there's my answer for you guys. Okay, and the last one. Oh, I might have to get a calculator out. Oh, no. I don't know. I might be able to figure it out. So here we go, 3, 15, and 252. So I'm pretty sure 3 goes into 252. Let's just uh, get our calculator out and figure that out really quick. Um, 252 divided by 3. Yes, it does, 84 times. So I'm going to factor out a 3. So I've got x squared plus 5x minus 84. Awesome. Okay, so then um, I need two numbers that multiply to be negative 84 and add to be 5. So what multiplies to be negative 84? I 
think that's going to be 12 and 7. And it's a negative down here. That means one of my answers have got to be negative, and it's a positive up here. So that means 12 is going to be positive, and 7 is going to be negative. So I've got 3 times x plus 12 times x minus 7. And there is my answer. Okay, guys, I will see you for the last section in just one moment. Um, go ahead and do the practice problems. We'll talk to you in a minute. Bye.